on, Colts fans? Welcome back to Mobcast. This is episode four. Michael Pittman Jr. is a number one wide receiver. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Maniac, punch the like button. Also, you can give me a follow at Twitter. Um, it's at Hoosier Films, but the L in Films is actually an I, so it's F I I N S. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter. If you're new to this or you just came across this podcast, uh, just to give you a heads up, this podcast is not always what's in the news, what's current, you know, the draft's going on right now, and, you know, that's what everybody wants to talk about, but I want to talk about something uh, that I saw online, and that is that Michael Pittman Jr. is not a legit one receiver. First off, that's an absurd, no matter how you cut it, it's an absurd thing to say. Now I'll start off and explain to everyone what I feel like what a number one wide receiver is. And it has nothing to do with fantasy. A lot of people are construing, you know, would he be a top pick in a fantasy draft? I don't know. I don't really play it that much. I haven't played it in years. Every time I get in a 10 or 12 team league, it seemed about like week 9 or 10, people have just stopped caring and stopped playing. And I was the only one trying to make trades and trying to win. So I gave up on that. But no, this is not fantasy. This is legit one wide receiver for a team. Wide receiver one can play at the X spot, the Y spot, the Z spot. They are valuable in the run game. They are valuable in the sweep game and can go up on 50-50 balls and catch screens and take them to the house. I believe that's Michael Pittman Jr. Michael Pittman Jr. was drafted in the second round of the 2020 NFL Draft. Pittman's listed at 6'4", around 225 pounds. So right off the bat, you get your prototype of what a wide receiver one usually is. It's a big guy, a guy that's pretty tall, and he's got some uh, muscle on him. 2020 offseason, everybody kind of knows what was going on. A lot of OTAs and camps were postponed. A lot of meetings were Zoom, all that stuff. They didn't even know if there was going to be a season. And that's what Michael Pittman Jr. walked into his rookie year. With that said, he still produces a rookie. He had 40 receptions for 503 yards, averaging 12.6 yards a catch, and his long was 45 with one touchdown. That may not sound like a lot, but considering he was probably two on the depth chart, he probably split time with Zach Paschal on reps, and he had T.Y. Hilton still there. Uh, That's pretty good for a rookie, considering he didn't have an offseason. But this is where my argument starts. 2021, new quarterback, Kind of a new system. I mean, it's typically the same system, but now you got Marcus Brady. T.Y. kind of falls off. He gets injured a lot. So it's up to, you know, MPJ to take that number one role. And he does. MPJ finished the season with 88 receptions, 1,082 yards, 12.3 yards a catch. His long was 57 yards, and he had six touchdowns. So on the surface, his stats already looked good already looked like a number one receiver he's a thousand yard receiver he almost has 90 receptions his touchdowns aren't super high but six is nothing to scoff at and then you add this crazy little thing that i think a lot of people miss it's this thing called context the context is the colts were the 27th ranked passing offense which is abysmal compared to colt standards and he still had a thousand yards now add a little more context look at all the other receivers on the team Hardly anyone even cracks 400, including the tight ends. Now, what that tells me, and I think anybody that is honest with themselves, is Colts had absolutely no help at number two receiver spot. T.Y. was up and down and injured and not there. Obviously, Paris Campbell, when he was playing, was amazing, but he got injured again. Pascal started the season really strong and then kind of fell off. So there's really no solidified number two uh, defenses were rolling coverage to Michael Pittman. You can say JT, you know, he started. they started stacking the box and it gave a lot of one-on-one opportunities for Pittman. And there's a case for that. But the dude was still the only receiving option. He was the only receiving option and he still got 1,000 yards and 90 receptions. And six touchdowns. And we have the number one run, running back in our backfield that we almost always handed it to on the goal line or in the red zone. So there's not a lot of red zone opportunities for Pittman in the first place okay so that's just some of the stats now you go to this tape Carson Wentz would routinely underthrow the deep ball 
routinely. I mean, half of his big deep plays, quote unquote deep plays, were was Carson Wentz underthrowing a receiver and the defender running into the receiver and a flag would get thrown. So there'd be like this unintentional pass interference calls only because Carson Wentz completely, you know, threw it up and just sent a prayer and it was usually falling short. The difference in Pittman's tape though is he'd be there to jump over the back of the cornerback, basically defend a, you know, an interception and rip it out of the hands and over the defender almost every time. Pittman had countless 50-50 balls and came down with them over 50% of the time. I'd say it was like 70-30. Pittman played in the slot. He could get off press at the X. I can't remember one like crucial drop. Really the things I can remember is the Baltimore game where he went up and over the defender, grabbed it, yanked it, and ran into the end zone. Dived into the end zone, really. Or the Titans game when... Carson Wentz throws that pick six left-handed in his own end zone. So, you know, the Titans are up by seven. So we have like a minute or something to go down the field and, you know, score a touchdown. Um, Carson's One of Carson's first throw was this like terrible throw into triple coverage. And Pittman comes up with it like in an insane play. And then Wentz would do exactly what Wentz does and underthrow a deep ball, I think, to Doolin. And it ends up being a pass interference and it's like on the five yard line or something ridiculous. Either way, the tape's there, the skill's there, the stats are there. Sprinkle in a little bit of that context and it's very obvious that MPJ is the number one receiver. In the classic sense of the term. One on the depth chart, one on the traditional role, you know, height, speed. I remember everyone used to say, is TY a real number one? Well... His archetype he isn't, but his production was. But Pittman's archetype is a number one receiver. Big bodied, muscular, pretty fast. I mean, 4 5 40 isn't blazing by any means, but he's a really good route runner. Gets open, catches the ball, has good hands, a smart, and he's a thousand yard receiver. He's obviously getting better, and he had no two option. And this is a run first team. He's still got his. Even if you compare them to wide receivers only, take all the tight ends out, he's top 15 in almost every single category. Receptions, yards, touchdowns, yards average, targets, all of it. He's top 15. Let's do a little math. There's usually about two or three starting wide receivers, No matter, I mean, depending on the scheme, on every team. So three times 32, that's 96. He's in the top 15. Since there's 32 teams and you need 32 receivers to have, quote unquote, the number one receiver, he's not only a number one receiver, he's in the top half of the number one receivers. And that's all added with the context that he was in the 27th ranked passing offense. Like, come on now. Another thing that you'll see in the tape is he took a couple screens pretty far. He, He knows how to run behind blockers and he is an amazing run blocker. Like, that doesn't show up on tape, and it really doesn't show up in his stats at all. But that is invaluable, especially if he's in the slot, because you need a good blocker in a slot if you have a run-first schemed offense like we do. But he can also play outside. Also, I forgot to mention, he's actually pretty good in the sweep game, or the reverse game, however you want to look at it. He had, I think, three or four reverses, and he had like 88 yards or something crazy. I may be off, but there's some highlights of him doing damn well in the reverse game. Either way, people want to argue with me. That's fine. Um, we're, I'm just super excited about this year to have a real quarterback that really knows how to get into and out of run plays and pass plays and read defenses. And I think Michael Pittman is going to blossom into like a top 10 receiver. If you look at the stats, you look at the trends, if he can stay healthy, he gets a little bit of help on that two spot. He gets some tight end help. The offensive line gets a little better. Now we have a better quarterback to elevate everybody. And you have the best running back in the league to play action off of. I think Pittman is going to beast out this year. I just hope to God we get a wide receiver that's worth a damn. And he doesn't get all the coverage rolled on to him. And, you know, Matt Ryan just does Matt Ryan things. Accurate, quick rhythm throwing, smart, all that stuff. Pittman will not only prove to everybody he's a one receiver, but probably a top 10 receiver in the stats and just in the film room. Well, there's the facts. There's my opinion. 
back with stats, back with context. If you have a disagreement with me, please comment. Please comment. I want to hear it. I love getting into debates about this. You know, respectfully, I, I'm not, I don't take it personally or, you know, get all in my feels or butthurt or whatever. But like I said, if you enjoy this stuff, I put this stuff out uh, once or twice a week along with some mini docs. If it's cold stuff you like, go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And with that said, finally, MPJ is a number one. Go Colts and take care.